Income tax 2022-2023 earned income tax credit the EIC with two qualifying children. Tax software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, Mr. Anderson living in Beverly Hills, 90210, W-2 income 100,000, way over the threshold to be getting the earned income tax credit. But that's our standard starting point, so that's where we'll start. 12950 is the standard deduction. Get this to the 87050 page number two. Calculating the tax, 14774, 15000 withheld to get us to the 226. Now, let's boost up the number of children here. We're talking about two children now, remembering that when we look at the earned income tax credit, then we look at it by tier here in essence. So if there are two children involved, then we can have two children involved that will have a maximum credit of 6,164, but we want to think about the curve in relation to the income, which will be slightly different if single. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it versus uh, married. So let's add the two children, which should also boost us up from a single filing status to a, a, a head of household filing status usually. Okay, so now we've got head of household status and hold on, yeah, so we got Mr. Anderson, two dependents now, two dependents involved, and that brings our standard deduction up to the 19,400. Obviously, we still do not qualify for the deduction because we're gonna be way over the threshold for the child tax credit, although, I'm sorry, for the earned income tax credit, although we do have the child tax credit, of course, with the children involved. Now let's start looking at the income thresholds. We can go up to 49,399 at the max. Let's start at the bottom line and then build up from there like 5,000 incremental incre increments, 5,000 increments and see what the impact is on the earned income tax credit. Now also remember, I wanna point this out up front and we'll also take a look at some examples at the end that if you had individuals, two individuals that were head of household filing status and they had like two kids or something like that, then and then they got married, then you would expect there might be a disincentive for getting married due to the way these, these refundable taxes are structured. So we'll take a look at that possibly a little bit more after we think about the, the curve uh, as income goes up. So let's go back on over and let's say, let's imagine we had uh, 5,000 of income, which would, you would think would be quite low and not something uh, that would be able to support two kids typically, but let's start there. And we're gonna say 5,000 of income. Obviously that's below the threshold, so we have no taxable income, but on page number two, we may still have the earned income tax credit as we have here at the 2010. So I'm just gonna map that out so we can make a, a graph of it credit 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 gosh uh 2010 who taught you how to spell 10,000 let's bring it up to 10,000 bring it on up 10,000 and now the credit is at 4,010 4,010 okay 4010 let's bring it to 15,000 15,000 and we'll go 15,000 K paso con esto or K <laughs> six zero there's my Spanish 6010 6010 20,000 that's close to the cap 
to the high mark, but not quite there. 20,000. 20,000. The credit's going up as earned income goes up. There it is at the cap, the highest point. 6164. There it is. 6164. Let's go to 25,000. 25,000. 25, 25, 25,000. There we have it. And now we're at back down to the 5133. 5133. Let's bring it up to 30,000. 30,000. 30,000. Can I get a 30,000? 30,000. 30,000. 30,000. And that comes out to the 4080. 4080. 35,000. Almost. Whoa, that's way up there. 35,000. That's not going to qualify for the credit. That's not going to qualify. They're rich. 35,000. And we're going to get the 30727. 3027. 40,000. It's going to go up to 49,000. So we're almost there. Almost there. 40,000. 40,000. 40,000. It's going to bring us to the 1974. So we'll say 1974. And then if we go up to 45,000, 45,000, 45, that brings us up to the 921, 921, and finally 50,000 is over the cap, and it'll go back down to zero, 50,000. So if I did this all correctly, it goes back down to zero, and if we plot this curve, we can say, okay, there's just a couple plot points of the curve. Insert recommended graph. I want something like that. Boom. Plot it out. And so as the as the income goes up, our our credit goes up because it's an earned income tax credit, but then it has to hit a cap of some point, of course, and then go back down. The maximum amount of the credit being at that 6164 that mirrors what's over here on our tables this is the form 1040 uh instructions the tables can be quite complex looking but same kind of idea they're just a lot more detailed than our little plot points we did so here's our income levels two children we're not married here we're looking at the unmarried two kids and you can see as income goes up the credit goes up until you're going to hit that 6,000 mark. It goes up over here, continues to go up, 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 up. We're on this column, continues to go up, 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 up. And then we're in this column, continues to go up, up, up. And then over here in this column, continues to go up until we get to 6,000, 6,164 right there at around 15,400. And then it sticks there at that level for some time. That's the maximum level until you get down to here, 20,200, and then it goes back down. So you can see that's what we have here. We had 20,000, it hit the max. 25,000, it goes to 5133. So 25,000, if I look at that, is right there. Uh, and it goes to, to uh, two children, 5133. 5133, 30,480, 30,000, 30, 30,000, 30,000, uh, which is here, 4080. So you get the idea there. So the other thing you want to keep in mind is if you have combat pay, then that would mean that if you're under the threshold and you can opt in to have the combat pay included for income, for, for, not for federal income taxes, but for calculating the earned income tax, it could be beneficial until you hit, until you clear that point, at which time it's not going to be beneficial anymore. And so you, if you have the option, you can, that's what you would think about for that type of option. Now, if we go to married, then you would think everything would double, but it doesn't. See, so that, so married, you're going to have a similar curve but it's not like the whole curve is doubling because the cap maximum is only at 55,529 and the maximum credit is still at that uh, 6, 1, uh, 6, 4. So you can imagine, for example, uh, 
uh, someone getting married and they have two kids and the other one doesn't have any kids, they're, they, then they would still be at the two items here and then they would be at this this column, which is a slight, which is like a similar curve, but you can imagine it slightly shifted to the right in essence, right? And then, and then, uh, but if you had like two individuals that were head of household individuals, for example, and they both had two kids and then they got married and had four kids, then you would be moving up from this tier and, and here to basically this tier, but you can't have over, you're not going to get any benefit over three kids so that you would think that you would end up in a situation that would be less beneficial in, in that situation, right? Because even though you're going up to the next tier, you'd be, you'd be removing an, another kid would be basically removed. So let's first, let's write, let's write down what we have here. So I'm going to say right now we've got a uh, head of household. If we had a single person, we've got then the uh, credit earn, earn income credit. And we're going to say that that is, that is, da, da, da. Uh, let, let's maximize it out. Let's, let's go back to the maximum, which I think some, somewhere around 20,000, 20,000 on the max. And that gets us to that six, one, uh, six, four. So let's say earned income. Let's go income, income. Uh, I can't spell. 20,000 and and earn income credit is the 6164 and then we had and then we had the refund the refund would be the we're saying here the 8789 8789 8789 okay so then Let's imagine we had two people in that situation. So if I double that times two, 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 then between the two people, if they filed separate head of household returns, be this times this, and this times this, they'd have a total of 40,000 income. And then the earned income credit double that would be for two people would be this. And then if they got married, if they got married, now you've got income of this times two, 40,000. And then what's gonna happen with you? And you've got four kids now, right? So we're gonna say, all right, well, what happened there? Now you got, you got these two people that got married. I think that would be, you know, something that you wouldn't wanna disincentivize. So let's say we had another W2, W2, another 20,000, and let's add some dependents. Okay, so hopefully I got everything in there correctly. So I got married filing joint now, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, and now we got four kids. We just stopped naming them. We just called them this one number three and number four, kid. You're number three, you're number four. And we'll say, okay, so now we doubled the income to 40,000. It doubles the standard deduction, which is great. That's what we would kind of expect to happen when you get married generally, because everything would have to kind of double because now you got two people. And so that, just here, if I go to page number two, the tax is now calculated at the 1,413, but now the earned income credit is 4,036. So 4,000, so the earned, let's say earned income credit is 4,036. Uh, even though I have three, even though I'm on the other tier with three, with three kit, kids or over three kids now right i have four we have four kids and the married uh filing so you would think uh you'd have to be under 50 before it goes away entirely but we're not maximizing out because our combined incomes are now up, up above the threshold that we're not getting the maximum of 6935 in that category but only that 4036 and then the refund the refund is we're gonna say here nine six six one so nine six six one so you could see you know a substantial difference between two people head of household that were in the same situation with, with two kids you know might have might see a substantial hit uh, if they got married and had four kids 
with re and they were relying on the earned income tax credit kind of situation if i did that correctly i know i'm doing these kind of quickly but the bottom line is you want to do some if you have these refundable credits in particular you want to make sure that you're doing some projections so you so you can see what the tax consequences would be and again if you didn't have these credits on the other income on the upper income side of things you would think most time you would be benefiting because everything else does double kind of normally meaning you get married and your standard deduction doubles and your which you would kind of expect so it doesn't disincentivize marriage and you would think that your tax tables actually kind of double or change respectively for two people versus one people one person and but the obviously the earned income tax credit the way it's structured isn't exactly structured in that format as well because it doesn't exactly you know double from uh, single or head of household to married file and joint and just want to point out again that uh, on the income threshold side of things we're talking w-2 income but you can also have other income that would be like self-employment subject to self-employment tax usually you would think would be something that would count which would be like a schedule c income uh, generally the tax exempt in income interest and dividends doesn't really count doesn't count towards the credit although it can totally uh exempt the credit or remove the credit from being able to take if you have a lot of interest and dividend income because that would indicate that you have a lot of money either in the bank and or in investments stocks and bonds for example